Tori, what's up? God, you are such a fucking king. I've been sitting here for... Oh, sorry. Can I not cuss on this? No, it's cool. Wait, what did you say? I'm such a what? A king for unmuting me. I've been like... Oh, sorry. Sitting here Dude, there's so many... Yeah, there's such a big list. Next. I just uh, want to talk to Nick. Uh, oh, hi. I have questions for you, buddy. Okay. Mm. Buddy. Oh, that was rude. I don't mean to be rude. We're we're we're, we're general friends. Don't worry. Yeah. Uh, we're from the like, south. We are hospitable here. Okay. What did you say? I said we're from the south. We are all hospitable here. Oh, I didn't know you fucking free. Ah, I can't cuss. Okay. Can, I don't care. I don't, I don't know. What if there's like people? Get it out. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey. Checked. Question for you, Nick. Do you think that there's racial like? Do you think that there is a racial profiling in the criminal justice system? Um. Yeah. To what extent? What does that mean? You want like a percentage or? No, I want to like hear like what you think. Like why? Well, so economic status or just oppression of their race over the years? Uh yeah. See, to me, I think that police and law enforcement go where the crime is. And we know where the crime is. We know what neighborhoods. And uh, I don't think that's strictly a socioeconomic thing. I think it is predominantly a racial thing. So I would say that, you know, because people like to bring up racial profiling as an example of why law enforcement is unjust. I think that it's just an example of law enforcement being efficient because, I mean, it's sort of like with uh, terrorism. Like, of course, we should racial profile terrorists because, you know, who are going to be the terrorists? It's generally going to be Islamic terrorism and it's going to be, you know, not like there's no white Muslims, but generally they're going to be Arab, right, or uh, uh, West Asian or South Asian, something like that. So I think that racial profiling is basically backed up by statistics and it's really more about economy of information. You can't arrest everybody and find all crime everywhere, but you can go to where most of the crime is and you can find most of the crime based on statistics. All right, Tori, your face obviously said that you probably didn't agree with a lot of things that were said. Oh, no. Okay. I agree with you need to go. Law enforcement needs to go where there's crime, work if there's crime, and in uh, poor areas, there's going to be higher crime. And it's normally, mm. uh, not uh, just poor. Here poor. we go. <laughs> and uh, black generally. I mean, like okay, Chicago. Yeah. Take Minority, Chicago, for yes. example. Where's the crime in Chicago? <laughs> south side? <laughs> the South Side. <laughs> Inglewood, McKinley Park, Garfield Park. I mean, these are, I drove through Garfield Park. The shooting rate is 450 per 100,000, and it is uh, mostly black. Wait, can I jump back on your terrorist thing? Like, do you sure. think terrorists are only like the Islamic terrorist groups? Like, you know, there's other, like, <laughs> I didn't say oh, they were only. Be quiet, hobo! Islamic. I didn't expect for you to belch in the mic. <laughs> my bad, my bad. The top four <laughs> terrorist groups by body count are uh, Muslim. In the no, fifth, no, 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 no. Sure. I didn't Islamic. know if like you actually thought that there was no more. I was just. Playing. Does that take into <laughs> no. account like is that just nationally or is that internationally? International. It's Al Qaeda, ISIS, Al Shabaab, and Boko Haram, and then the fifth is a large resistance army. And then, so they, most of those things believe, and that's not saying all Muslims are terrorists, but most of those all have another pillar of faith called, what is it? I mean, jihad, right? Something like that. Yeah. If, all, if you are, if, well, no, that, but they've, yes, but they've added a different part. Yeah, because for sure. Five, there's five pillars of faith. They add a six jihad. Basically, if you're deemed an infidel, me, anyone else that doesn't believe in their faith, if you're not willing to convert, then you're not worth being here. So yeah. by any means necessary, if not, there's also just some really evil people. For instance, Boko Haram is really evil. Everybody, the Muslims in that aren't or for Boko Haram in those areas will literally call them devils. So it's not just, it's not saying like, dude, all Middle Eastern people are terrorists. No, but the people that believe in jihad are more likely to do it. Okay, back to my buddy Nick. I can't call you buddy because I feel like I'm being rude. I'm not trying to be rude. I just can't okay. address people that are older than me, like in a normal way. Okay, so, that got creepy real fast. All right. Uh, what? I'm like <laughs> literally, a, I don't know. What am I supposed to call you? Mr. Fuentes dog? <laughs> like, I don't know. I'm calling you buddy. Yeah. So, what do you think yeah. that we could do to try to stop like this? Um, 
crime in this black area that's happening so much like what things should be put in place we should basically just have like a police state like i really liked when donald trump <clears throat> said that he was going to send the military to occupy chicago because that that is just frankly what is called for i think that i mean for in, in every neighborhood where this is the case baltimore la chicago new york new orleans um, you know, certain neighborhoods and people have just proven that they are not governable under the existing regime, under the existing laws. And so we just have to transition to a system that is more workable. I mean, you see some of these Chicago public schools and I see a lot of these videos on like world star hip hop where you'll see like a petite little white girl teacher and she's in a class <laughs> in, this, in Chicago or, you know, in some city. And, uh, you know, you've got students that are, you know, punching each other and flipping stuff over. And this is like, essentially, I mean, that is a microcosm and representative of what is happening on a broader level, which is to say that, I mean, they are allowed all these liberties and what do they do with them? So I think that for the benefit of the people there and for everybody else, there just needs to be an occupation and there just needs to be like draconian laws. And we need to take the people that are committing the crimes and put them in jail. And a lot of people see that as a problem that needs to be remedied. They say the problem is not the crimes that are being committed. It's the people being locked up for the crimes. They call it mass incarceration, but it's mass incarceration because it's mass crime. And I would rather the people committing the crimes be in jail than on the street. I'd rather, you know, have them over there behind walls than see them when I get out on an exit on Sacramento Avenue, you know, in Chicago. So that's why I feel about it is there just needs to be commensurate government to the level of instability. Okay. So you don't believe in like, okay, you believe in mass car. I don't know. I'm not going to say what you believe in mass incarceration. I'm just like thinking about what you said, but you're saying that there's all these fights and all this stuff. How would a military going in now? Don't get me wrong. I think extra enforced, like police enforcement, extra protection in Chicago would be extremely helpful because there is a lot of crime and that's a huge problem in America right now. And I don't get how the military would at all inform or educate the kids what not to do after seeing generation of generations of I do this, this, and this. I'm going to be like everybody else in the neighborhood and I'm going to be like, I feel like there's no educational value in sending military there instead of trying to re like rehabilitation of stuff like that. I, I just don't really believe in education as a solution. I mean, maybe in the long, the long-term solution for that instability is to build up, uh, you know, good habits and good traditions and rebuild the family and uh, restore religiosity. Those are the real antidotes to crime is, strong families with a mother and a father married. That's the other problem with blacks is uh, their out of wedlock birth rate is 70%. So, I mean, people don't really think about what that means. It means that only 30%, if you meet a black person, three out of 10 of them will have their parents married when they were born. And that means everybody else, that means they don't have a father in the home or the parents are separated, right? And if you are not being raised by a father and a mother, particularly if you don't have a father, the rate at which you're going to commit crime is worse. Blacks are already predisposed, I believe, to commit more crime. And we went over this last week. But then you add to that these cultural factors and these other factors, and it exacerbates the problem. But what's happening right now is that it's just anarchy. It's lawlessness. And this is only compounded by the fact that you've got political correctness now. And I, by the way, you know, I live in the suburbs. My parents are born and raised in the city, so they know Chicago cops and they'll tell you that cops don't even want to police these areas anymore because they know that if they shoot the wrong kid, then they're going to end up on the news and the city's going to get burnt down and everything. You know, they're going to be like Darren Wilson or George Zimmerman. So they don't even bother anymore. But I mean, who loses out in the end? It's, it's blacks because they're not going to go in and enforce laws because they know that if they, you know, cross the line and this tends to happen in any war zone or any, you know, crime situation that they can end up on the news and they can end up with their house surrounded or whatever. You know, Michael Brown tried to steal a cop's gun. Cop kills him. Now this cop is infamous right in the city, he has to like flee the town and he's on trial. So they say, you know what, to hell with them. So what we need, at least for the moment, is to restore order. Before we can talk about education and all that, we have to restore order. And order is restored by force. These are gangs. These are violent people. And the only way to match them is with force and, and make them afraid. And making them afraid means you can't be politically correct. It means you can't be afraid of Black Lives Matter 
you know, saying, oh, you know, you shot somebody. Here's the thing. You got criminals everywhere. You've got gang members everywhere. And everybody that ends up dead is somebody that was trying to get their life back on track. They were a good kid. They had straight A's in school and blah, blah, blah. And, you know, down to a man, they're all in gangs. You know, they're either people that got killed as a bystander or they were in gangs. And so, you know, you almost miss the distinction. So at a certain point, it just has to be curfews and military on the streets and soldiers on every corner. And if you have a gun, like we're going to frisk you, we're going to stop you, we're going to frisk you, we're going to throw you in jail. And if you shoot somebody, you know, we're going to shoot back. And like, that's the way you restore order. And then you can worry about rehabilitating the law. But isn't that education? Like, I don't get, wouldn't you want to promote education? The whole, like, we're going to stop all this gang violence. We're going to stop all this mass, like, criminal activity happening in the Chicago area, especially in juveniles. Like, wouldn't you want to give them a home? And you were saying about the whole family situation, the parents being in a home is a major problem, but doesn't that also have to do with like rate how it's been for so many years in those areas? So wouldn't you want to educate and try to predispose people like, or uh, undispose of the predisposal like of that? saying that you can get out of here, you can do better. Wouldn't you want to educate them instead of playing soldiers on every single corner of the street, acting like they're criminals in their own country and they can't be free like anyone else because just because they're social, socioeconomical keeps them there, even though they did nothing? Like It's not their socioeconomics. Why do you think those neighborhoods are bad? It's because the people in them are bad. It's because okay, it's not, not like they're necessarily person, bad, okay. but they they have low, they, they have accepted a standard of living. I mean, and all these people know, and this is just irresponsibility on the part of the parents. And it is a failure for the generations to, uh, to rise above. They have proven that they're ungovernable and it's like this in every city. And it's been like this for decades and the public schools suck as it is. I mean, they can't educate people that are ready to learn and have good parents and are involved in the community and everything, let alone people that are actively resisting it and violent and so on. And the public schools only do so much. You go to school and then you go home and you go home and you go in on the block, you go on the block with all the people on the block and you hang around all the others. And, mm. and it has created this vicious cycle that must first be broken by restoring order so the kids can go to school safely. And first we establish safety, we establish law and order. And then once that happens, we can proceed from there. And we could talk about investment in charter schools and, you know, opportunities with that. But the problem now is, you know, kids are trying to get to school and they get shot and kids are coming home from school and they're being brought up in gangs, you know, and they're being brought up in gangs on the alleys. And so, you know, this, this idea that we can only do these like very liberal, like smart solutions, it just hasn't worked. And these people are people that, you know, try going to the South side and you see them hanging out at the gas station, you see them loitering by the liquor store, whatever, you know, try going up to these people with a textbook and saying, don't you know that you could get a scholarship and work in an office? I mean, the uh, only paths out that they see are like basketball and rap. Teach them. And everybody knows that. Give them someone to look up to. There needs they to be like role models. Obviously. Like Michael Jordan. Thank you. Like just proved yourself you just just proved it that they have no one to look up to their parents are crappy their schools are crappy they have no one to show they, no one's showing them a good way to live their life so they're being brought up and they're just assuming my only way I have to protect myself I can't rely on the system I can't rely on the police because I'm being told that a cab that kind of stuff so I need to defend myself I need to join a gang and I need to have kids left and right and then just leave them see what well, you lucas uh, sorry go on i wanted to let me you. pause real quick and just bring up the point um that this man is gone <laughs> <laughs> also... it's like it's time he's done that all right moving on <laughs> i just i just don't understand you're saying the best way to handle this is a police state but that would just instantly Wouldn't that create fear. more of a barrier that would create more of a oh, barrier please. against the people well, Lucas, they tend to have uh, lots of wedlock in marriages, even in Africa, even in these traditional societies, I guess, traditional. Do you believe Africa. it's genetic? Well, like, I mean, there, it's not real. It could be social, social, psych, what's that word? But mo a majority of Africa is um, in extreme poverty. Well, I mean, poverty doesn't necessarily mean you break apart your, in fact, Poverty usually means you're backwards socially, at least according to Westerners, and you'd rather be in those supposedly backwards gender uh, relationships, you know, where you have, you know, the extended family or the uh, nuclear family. Here's the bottom you know, line. 
the innocent person and the society as a whole should not play should not be a victim just because there are certain people that we could spend a lot of time and energy and, and fail at taking them by the hand and teaching them this is how you act in a civilized society it's not and don't uh, the, the hundreds it. of millions it's of people in america who have done nothing wrong should not be the victim just because we think we should be nice to these people who commit crimes but you just were talking about the well-being of the kids being brought up into these communities of people that are committing crimes. So if you you can complain all about, oh my gosh, what are we going to, these people, we should just leave them and let them fend for themselves. Obviously, you don't care about the well-being of the children. I care. No, hold on. I care about the well-being of children, but let me, let me ask, let me propose you this, Lucas. All right. I would like you to go down to a place where I live for a little bit called Orange Mound. It is in Memphis. I would like you to go down to the block and try and, or any 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 corner, any corner store or whatever. I'd like you to go down there and talk to one of them and say, look, I want to help your kids out. First of all, I'd like to make I'd like to see you walk. They would mug blocks. you. Do you see how like you'd come to them and be like, we want to break down barriers. They would mug so you. Like, I'm not saying, I'm not... like saying that Lucas, like saying that Lucas could not go down to this place in Memphis, Tennessee, and ask to help them. Like that's a barrier that's so scary in America right now yeah, that right. we have that. So why aren't we trying to fix that yeah. instead of putting a soldier on the Because they'll shoot you. They'll high. shoot you on the corner. Go try. Go try. You go help them. I can try personally. Think it took a teenager in 2020 to realize this people have tried and it hasn't worked all right that's why we're here on oh no 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 look let me explain this and this isn't saying we're going to criminalize like i'm not oh i don't know what they're trying to say i'm not saying all blacks are criminals is the percentage of which they commit crimes higher than most other races yes now i've grown up what are you talking about which type talking drugs talking violent because i can go on those with you Okay, you want to bring up some FBI no, crime statistics? Let me say this. Let me say this. Let me say this. No, you're right. No, no, no. You're right. Okay. So if you're in a majority white community, what do you think the majority of the crime by race is going to be? White? If you're going to be in a majority Hispanic community, what do you think the most crime rate is going to be on average is going to be there? Hispanic. But when you have, when you have a percent of the population, you have a percent of a population that commits more crimes on average than anyone else. And I'm not saying they're all bad. Like you know, my third, like non a kid I literally grew up from, from a dirt floor to a house now, right? He's black. So I'm not definitely saying, I'm definitely not saying, and that's not like some, ooh, I have a black friend token. Like, I'm not saying they're all bad, but the rate is higher. And it but is I'm, I think I have literally, I have literally out about our held, no, no, no. I have literally held my friends in my arms. I watched the life leave his eyes. Because the dude, we got caught in the drive-by. Now, let me explain something to you. He wasn't even the target. It was the house right next door. You know what the guy said? Because we knew it was an inner gang thing. You know what the guy said? Well, oh, well, he got past his initiation anyway. The, 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 the care for human life is not there. People, exactly. People That's what know. we need. To okay. So you think they're going to care about you going down there and help them? No, no, because I'm going to get a lick. They're going to get a lick and they're going to run your pockets for everything they got. And that's not just on black communities. But I'm a teenage unarmed white boy. I'm, like, we so, need to figure, the problem is, I'm not saying. But you're even more likely to get blasted. But I'm just, I'm arguing that what we need to be focused on is raising the young, the youth in these communities and showing them that there's a way to live a better life more substantial, more enjoyable life. Because if you're just going to complain about the crime they commit and then do nothing for the kids that are just going to be brought up and We're told to do something for them. Can I, can I add something? Solve anything. Yeah. Patriot, can I add something? you've been wind up, raise your hand, sorry. We're going to put tanks on the streets. Wow. All right. So I mean, <laughs> Tori, Tori brought, some, brought up um, education, which I mean, that could succeed, that could fail. Like an example is like schools with sex education, which some people argue is the sex education is not very good. But schools teach that if you have unprotected sex, you can get pregnant. But if you have protected sex, it lessens the odds of you getting pregnant. No, they, they teach, teach abstinence. They much. teach abstinence. I wish I they know. would. I, I understand that, but they uh, still teach using protection as well. But anyways, my point, being, my point being that you can educate and you can teach kids all of these things. But at the end of the day, it is their choice. They're either going to choose to do the right thing or they're going to choose to do the bad thing. So whether or not you educate someone or not, it's not they're going to choose what they want to do but and most people that are in gangs they don't choose to be in or they don't they aren't forced to be in gangs they choose they to are be, they, they literally so, are let, let me talk 
because they believe it's the only way of life to be able to make money, to be able to be supported by people. That's what they think. It is a choice. It is. It is not. not if you don't think, if you don't think it's, a, if you don't think it's a choice, I would, I would advise you to go watch. There's a YouTube channel. No, called it's, no it's not. No, a choice. Okay, I can agree with Hold you. Hold on, no, let me finish my point. Jesus. Go off. Go on, yo. I let y'all finish. Let me finish. Go my off, fatty. I've Lay lived on. this life. I might be this white country kid, but trust me, I know more about this than probably half of y'all ever will. I hope you don't ever know about it. All right, but look, I will implore you to go and watch a video by a YouTube channel called Jubilee. They make something called Middle Ground. And they, they have a, they literally, let's look up Jubilee Middle Ground Gang. I, I watched that, yes. Bloods and Crips, yeah. You know what they said back then? Yeah, it wasn't a choice. Now it is a choice. And it is a choice if you want to get affiliated or not. Trust me, I know, I know, friend, I have friends that are affiliated. I have friends that have chosen not to be affiliated. And they're not, they're, it's, they're not pressed gang into it. Most of them feel an obligation when mo multiple of their family members or friends are there. They're like, I feel obligated to do that. That's not force. That's still a choice. No, I'm not. I'm not arguing that they're literally being forced into a game. I'm arguing that they're growing up in an environment where there's literally no other choice. They don't yeah. know of another choice. We need to educate yeah. them on the other choice. So like, when you say, like these, these we have dumped millions and millions of dollars into social programs but they reject our help. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, there are third Money and fourth graders who cannot problem. read. In fourth grade, I was reading I can't even books, read all the way. But they don't, have, they don't have any reading skills at all. And they don't even accept any help, even though they've been given millions of dollars many Money times. Do you not think that's Tori, if you're in the MOH, do you feel good if you were in um, like a less, like a poorer community and this government this these programs showed up and they were just like yeah we're gonna teach you all this stuff you're gonna immediately feel defensive because you're you feel less than you feel less. what is your solution what is your solution that's not necessarily true because I, I was trying to be the you can choose to be the victim or you can choose to be the victor. You can choose to rise above. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just go to the Black Leadership let me, Summit. Let me, let me try what I would do. Yeah, go to the class of uh, Black kids. You can Lucas. be a victim or a victor. And they're going to say, I want to work hard every day and make minimum wage. Lucas. I used to work at UPS and like the two, and I'm just saying, I worked with a, a Black supervisor. And I had a partner who was black. We would unload the trailers together. And both of them said they were involved in gang activity. Like on the training day, uh, the one was like, hey, yo, like you gang bang. And he was like, yeah, gang bang. You can. they're like, yeah. Like, what are the odds? <laughs> Two people working at UPS. And they're like, yeah, yeah. Like, we're both gang banging. Lucas. And the, uh, the turnover rate there was so high. And it was because people come to this job and they say, oh, yeah, fuck this. I'm going to get my bonus. I'm going to be a seasonal worker. I'll get my I'll get my little money. And then I'm going to go back and, and do what's easy. And it's easy to pull a trigger and it's easy to uh, you know sell drugs and, and choose that path. And I think that's why they choose it. Lucas. So we have to send the military on the streets on. to make sure that all that is shut down. Checkpoints, soldiers, and so fuck all this understanding you. stuff. We need it. Order, order okay. above all else. I agree with the protests going on currently of quarantine, correct? Let Fatty talk. Fatty has something to say. I'm sorry. Tori, Tori's been trying to say something. Tori, what's up? You Thanks. Okay. So I totally agree that gang being in a gang is 100% your choice. It is. It's you physically saying, I'm going to affiliate with this gang. I'm going to physically do this. There's no way around that, 100%. But I feel like there's a lot of, um, misrepresentation like we said with um nick smiling no. at me okay. i can't react huh i can't this no, react. It's okay i don't know i was just I keep a straight face he got in the zoom the last week when i first met this man like i still don't agree with everything he says but like this man literally will smile at you for no apparent reason so. <laughs> i just it's okay i make facial expressions too i'm so mean i feel like i'm being mean okay anyways back to what i was saying i'm the meanest person you ever meet so yeah <laughs> but like okay i can agree with the order i think on some extent with an ad of education but i don't feel like there needs to be a whole entire military presence because i feel like it's almost like <sighs> lucas tori you both have a very noble thing in mind you want there are these people in our country who didn't choose to be in a rough situation and you think we should take care of them and i, I think that's uh that's a good position to have in general. I think it, it shows high moral standing. 
But you've repeatedly said, uh, Lucas, you said this specifically, that money is not the solution to all these problems. But then you turn and call us like authoritarians and theocrats when the only solution is to get people to go to church, to stay married, to raise their kids and to work hard. And then when we suggest this as a solution, you call us theocrats or fascists or authoritarians. So you can pick your choice. You can keep throwing money, which you admit doesn't work at communities that don't appreciate it. Or we can give them the church, which is not only a physical okay. helpful, but also leads to salvation. 